Today, we're all about the defense, including our first round pick, Forbes. And I got the film fired up for him. I get to sit down with my brother from another <laughs> mother. Oh, man, you knew that was coming. It all starts right now. Welcome to the show, Michael Jenkins, Fred Smoot, Logan Paulson, Santana Moss, and one of the guys that everybody's excited about, Fred, I can see the look <laughs> on your face. The first round draft pick, Emmanuel Forbes, and so far, living up to the hype. Yep. Uh, that doesn't shock me. I'd be more shocked if somebody <laughs> told me they pushed the moon out the way. It shocks you because you've been hyping this man up for six months, man. Jeez. The truth is in the prison. <laughs> sit that back and true. watch and relax. I'm excited. Well, I'm, I'm happy, man. I'm happy that he's out here and he's showing everybody what we got. You know, that's mm -hmm. one of the first things you want to do when you're a first round pick. Mm -hmm. You want to come here and show these guys that they pick right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's show the people what they've been missing as he's been suiting up for the team for the first time and looking pretty good from what we've seen thus far. Time for our mission debrief presented by FedEx, where now meets next. And if you you haven't seen the guy yet here you go what have you guys noticed i've noticed that he's uh comfortable <laughs> he looks like he belongs uh mm -hmm. mississippi state bulldog so he just the confidence is just exuding up out of him and like i said he's eager to learn yeah. and that's the best thing about it. i mean one of the things that stands out just his athletic talent you know i mean yeah. he's he's one of those guys it's just one of the things they talk about, some of the guys who's mentioning him saying the knack for just making plays. He's a playmaker. He's a guy that's not just gonna come out here and say, I had great coverage. He gonna he gonna attack the ball and he might get slipping and he'd be down streaking down the sideline with the ball. Oh, I'm telling people now at FedEx Field, when he gets his hands on the ball, left hand up. <laughs> left, left, left hand up the band, we'll start playing. I promise you that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things for me is the football instincts off yeah. the charts, and he's just showing that every single day of practice. Well, he's definitely impressed defensive coordinator Jack Del Rio, who sat down with Julie to talk about it. One of the reasons you brought in Emmanuel Forbes, and even Quan Martin, his ability Correct. to take that ball away. Correct. Uh, what have you seen from them in just a little bit, just a little bit, right. to say that they can continue that at this level, though? Well, I mean, we've yet to really start mm -hmm. practicing. We got the uh, rookie minicamp, right. and right away you can see the ball likes Emmanuel Forbes. <laughs> it, it, he finds it. Um, he's got a knack for it. He's got great acceleration, great ball skills, and he will he will definitely produce turnovers. So when you hear that, Logan, I'll start with you. What does he mean? So, I mean, I, I, the, the, obviously Forbes gets a lot of picks, right? Yeah, but yeah. I feel like it's Forbes kind of creating his own luck. Like when you watch the film, when you yeah. watch him in practice, he's a guy that studies formations, understands alignments, and is able to cheat those plays a little bit, kind of yeah. makes his own luck. So, like, yeah. it's not that the ball likes Forbes. Forbes forces the ball to like him, yeah, right? He yeah. makes that opportunity for himself. And Fred, you've talked a lot with us about, you know, reading coverages, reading tells, yeah. and it's so unusual for me to see yeah. a young guy come with that kind of knowledge. First of all, he's a ball magnet. Yeah. I got three, three names for you. Runday Barber, D'Angelo Hall, yeah. Dre Black. I, the ball found these yeah. guys, so yeah. I know what Coach's saying. So at the end of the day, you're right. You studied to get to that point, but some guys just got that net. Yeah. The ball just mm -hmm. fall right yeah. there in yeah. front of them. Yeah, true. he stole my where I was going to say, he have a knack for the ball. Yeah. And, and you see guys, you play with guys like that. D. Yeah. Hall was one of those guys. I used to be like, how is this guy always around the ball and Forbes has the juice like that? But I was going to say, D. Hall was a gambler, man. Yeah. He's yeah. always putting his chips on the table. He's going all in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like when you watch Forbes, though, yeah. it's not like that. He's, yeah. It's calculated. He, yeah, he, it's, it's yeah. much more calculated, yeah. much more kind of assertive. You know what and I'm saying? for him to do that at a young age like that, yeah. yeah. And so one of the things I heard, and I think this is great, is that the idea that I put all my film study in, but I need to actualize that. And he yeah. does a good mm. job of actualizing that film study and making that play, getting that interception. Can you develop an instinct like that? Because you can stay inside the film room all day, you can listen to your coaches, but how do you develop something when you just kind of know where the ball is? Well, one of his gifts is he played receiver first. Yeah, And oh, I remember being yes. a young buck, when I played receiver, yeah. DB was, was easy for me, because now I'm reading the quarterback, I know three step, I know five step, yeah. I know what the receiver's thinking okay. when I see certain movements. So it's easy for a guy, it's not easy, it's just him knowing the position well. And we say, he living right. That's what we used to say in the game of football when the yeah. ball was just firing yeah. like this. Yeah. That boy living right on and off the field. And people forget he's played a ton of football. Yeah. yeah. And I just think about really good DBs. It's just reps. He's had so many. It's a natural skill, no doubt. He's had so many reps to see that depth, to see those splits, and understand the tells that kind of put him in those positions to be successful. So, yeah, I think he's probably developed it, but it took a long time, I think. Well, you got to queue up the film. Time to go inside the film room presented by Amino. It pays to be healthy. All right, let's take a look at your boy, Emmanuel yes. Forrest. I know we've been watching a lot of films of Emmanuel Forrest, yeah. right, Tana? Yes, it's, we have. And he's a really good player. And I think a 
a lot of people associate what, what he does well with catching the football, right? Yeah. Interceptions, turnovers, right? Here he is making a great play, fighting through the receiver. In couple the ball zero. Up, in couple zero. And getting friendly with the football. Yeah. Then, what would you say? Left hand up, right? Left hand up. Everybody in FedEx, stand up. Because he's excellent, man. He runs yeah. that 4-3, very fast, explosive guy. So, what? I, but the thing that I think is really interesting is that, he, you know, in the draft process, yeah. Jack Del Rio, Ron kept saying, we want a guy who's played in zone before. Yes. And I'm going to take a look, and this is going to be our case today, our guy. Yeah. Uh, three sticks down here. Yeah. Because one of the things he, he said, he never felt comfortable playing in zone. Yeah. And Kendall Fuller, good zone player. So let's compare the two techniques here, Fred. Yeah. Because when I look at this, I say, Kendall in this play, right? Mm -hmm. In this very kind of quarters-ish coverage. So quarters, they're going to drop out. Mm -hmm. They've got verticals, right? But look at Kendall's technique compared to... To, to win, to, yeah. Jack look Luthard, how yeah. square he is, and yeah. look how his feet aren't crossed mm -hmm. over, Tanner. Right, and he's not in a rush. Like yeah. he's not in a rush to go anywhere. Very I love patient. it because when you look at this, right, he is crossing, rushing. Crossing, yes. crossing, he's crossing, rushing crossing. to get out of there, right? Yeah, yeah. crossing over. And when I crossing. cross over, I can't get back to the nope. football. Can't right? break. He's shuffling. And they go to different crossing over, shuffling. And one of the things you saw during OTAs was Emmanuel Forbes yeah. being patient, patient. Yeah. staying square, mm -hmm. reading concepts, understanding where my vision needs to be, right? It's not at the receiver. Nope. It's at the quarterback. And yep. when you look at um, when you look at uh, Fuller up here, he yep. does a great job of keeping his vision on the quarterback because that helps him understand mm -hmm. when I need to make a break. It's What's not just the receiver, on? right? Yeah. So, Fuller has that in the bag because they played a lot of cover three in addition to some other stuff yep, yep. at Mississippi State. Yep, yep, most definitely did. He did play it. But when you bring up Fuller, the education that he gets from yeah. being where he is, like this guy is supposed to be looking here and he sees number two go away. Yeah. You should know automatically the, the, the ride is point. inside. That's a great but point. But he's watching the wrong person because yeah. he's watching this guy. Yeah, right. Like Because it's it's a full field, field read, read, right? Yes. It's, it's all mm -hmm. part of the process. So yeah. when I see this, I see a guy who's not very comfortable and it I'm not saying he's going to break this pass up, Fred, but it's going to be closer than this. And, yeah. and he's going to compete. And yes. right now, this is not compete. Yes. You yeah. cannot win like that. Tighter throwing windows and maybe get a batted ball. Who knows, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this play right here is a great illustration of what we're talking about with playing with vision, vision. right? Yep. Vision to the whole concept. Because his eyes do start out looking at the quarterback, mm -hmm. but watch at the snap. Watch at the snap. They go directly to the receiver. And that limits his vision. That yeah. limits his ability to read the quarterback and his drop. Yep. He's watching. He goes, his eyes snap up, and then you see that, Tanner? You pointed yeah. this out to me. What do they do? He had to pause a little bit now and look at the little, quarterback. Yeah. Little hitch if in his he had his court, if he had his ass on the quarterback from the start, man, he would be coming already downhill on that ball. Downhill on the ball. And he, he does. He makes a really nice play here. He comes in, you know, contested, it. contested close, catch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think if he's able to kind of eliminate that hitch, like, is this ball batted out, right? Mm -hmm. On first and 10, we're not in second and three or yep. four. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something when I look at when I look at him and what he does and what Fuller does, yeah. he has that skill set. He has that ability to break in the ball, anticipate, read the concept, and make plays. I think this yeah. is another one, right? Mm -hmm. He's down here at the bottom. And we're not picking on him. We're just saying he wasn't really comfortable yeah. in the system. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's fine, that's fine. And so when we get here, right? immediately he's opening up, right? Yes. And I compare that to Ken, and they're in a little bit different coverage responsibilities, mm -hmm. but look at how square Kendall is, and look at how immediately yeah. he's turned, right? Oh, yeah, I want yeah. that it's, all day, right? I, yeah, I, want, you I want, want somebody looking at looking just like that all day. Yep, yep. Looking at that all day because I can run in, I can run an out, yep. I can run a stop. I, I can, can hit your blast spot. I can, I can, I can, can, spot. can do whatever I can do. A bunch of stuff too, and look at Fuller up here. Staying at his depth, matching the concept, and really trusting that the defensive line's going to put him in a good position to be successful. Yep. Working cohesively with the, within the defense, yep. right? Yep. Here he is. And again, we're not picking on him, but Fuller does not play this, this technique. Way. Yeah, he, he does. He understands yep. the zone. Well, look at the difference right now. Yep. Look at where yep. he's at and look at where he is. Absolutely. At. He's in the pocket. He's out of pocket. Yep. Uh, he's out of phase. He wants to go up top first. Yep. He understands, I, I got a safety plus the corner is not backing up. I'm coming down His here. eyes are over yes, to the start. Yeah. Yes, And so when I look at this, I say that is the addition that Kendall Fuller brings. Is yeah. it, does he, does he, he, he decreases this throwing window a little bit, yeah. makes the quarterback hold the ball for a second. Mm -hmm. the, the, the rush gets home. All these guys that are trying to eat, they get home, they get sacks. And then the quarterback has to rush a throw, and then it's a pick or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. So I think when I look at Fuller and when I look at he does really well, yeah. it's he fits the system. Yeah. He fits that zone philosophy. Yep. He's comfortable there. Mm -hmm. And again, that's what I think makes him special for this defense. And it's going to change this defensive uh, backfield in a dramatic way. And I can't wait to Fuller to continue to put his mind in Forbes' body. Right. I think that's what's going to take Forbes to the next level. And we all know that you were pretty fired up about the signing, right? And so let's go take a look <laughs> at that clip of you on uh, draft night. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about! 
right there. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Fred was pretty excited we picked his guy out of Mississippi State, so we thought he'd be the perfect person to do the first sit down. And now that you're at your new team, mm -hmm. you do have some former Bulldogs on this team. Yeah. You do got Montez Sweat, who I'm sure you watch living in Mississippi. So but how does it feel to have two ex-Bulldogs on the team and have you talk to those guys? I have. I talked to both of them. Yeah. And they just, you know, tell me come in, ready to work, come from Mississippi State, you know how to work, and all this other stuff. So I'm just ready. See, you know what? That, that just makes me feel good. <laughs> every, every time you say, well, I come from Mississippi State. High school, I used to watch a little bit of Jalen Ramsey. That's my dog. I long, know long, tall, long, cornerback, similar yeah. to the same. Uh, what parts of his game do you want to bring to your game now that you're in the league? Just the physicality, honestly. He's physical. He know how to use his body. Yeah. He know how to move with his body. and just physical. So something I plan on doing. But now in the league, every week it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, just like going in the game knowing that – these guys are the best player on their college team. It's the best of the best. And just honestly, it's mental just being locked in every play. Yeah. Knowing, yep. that, knowing that I can get beat or anything happen. Like, oh, just, you, this is the one thing I can promise you as a corner. Mm -hmm. We're going to get beat. Yeah. All right now, the thing is, what are you going to do you get beat? I what think you going to do after you get beat? And that's what I'm and saying. And we talked a little bit before here, Han, about the mm -hmm. coverages you played mm -hmm. at Mississippi State. Uh -huh. And I came out, I only played man to man most of the time. So when I did get to the league, I was eager to learn how to play cover two. Mm -hmm. You told me, Defense coordinator basically challenge y'all to play everything from zero, cover four, cover two, quarter, quarter, half. You have done it all. Yeah. Do you think that's going to help you have to learn the defenses that we got here with Jack Del Rio? Honestly, I've been in the playbook, been watching film, and it's like literally the same thing. Only thing different is the terminology. Let's take a look at the numbers Forbes put up as a bulldog. He is yet another defensive weapon added to JDR's defense and his ball hawking skills. Look at these numbers. Did not go unnoticed by the commanders. 14 career picks and 20 passes defended throughout his time at Mississippi State. I First of all, look at those pick sixes. That's what you look like. When he gets his hand on the ball, like I say, FedEx, stand up. He's going to take it to the end zone. Seems like you're pretty fired up, Fred. Time for Fred Fired Up, presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the Washington Commanders. Welcome to Fred Fired Up, and I'm fired up this week because 20% of this defense is made no. of four dogs. And not only four dogs, I'm talking about one six six, one four four forty. The other one is six two, one four three flat forty. So at the pounds. end of the day, hey, listen, if the groceries are good, why not go back to the grocery store? Why not go back to the grocery store? And they sell them in, in Mississippi. <laughs> I, I told you once, I'm going to tell you twice. Keep going back to that grocery store. Mississippi State has never let us down. And I'm fired up. I'm always going to be fired up about the board. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we'll give you the best content all week long on Monday, an exclusive player interview. A Command Center podcast for your ride home comes your way on Tuesday. On Wednesday, it's this show, Command Center. You got to listen to Tannis Takes on Thursday. And on Friday, Logan lives in the comments. He's also living on the sidelines, catching up with head coach Ron Rivera. Time now for your field pass presented by The Washington Times. Jack Del Rio had some really nice additions yes. on the back end there, right? A lot of stuff going on there. Um, how have those new additions been, and how happy is Jack now in these meetings? Oh, Jack's fired up. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he, I mean, he is. He, he's as happy as a pig and slop. I mean, <laughs> the, the beautiful thing about Jack, though, is, and again, having a veteran guy like Jack who's done it and had success as he's had is not just a coordinator but as a head coach. You know, things come very easily for sure. him. And I think the players really trust in him. Okay. Last year, we really saw it. We came in. We talked about it. OTA's mini camps, we were doing things different. Yeah. You know, you came out with some different ideas in terms of coverage uh, philosophies, some different types of blitzes and pressures. And those things really the players gravitated to. And we saw the results. Yeah. Top five in almost um, a lot of categories yeah. of defense last year. So we saw the growth and we saw the development. Coming into this year, now it was about refining and retooling, yeah. but also adding a couple of key components. We went out, drafted a couple of young DBs in the first two rounds, and they are really assimilating very well to what we do. It seems like they've just they've fallen in, kind of like true pros, like you talked about in the draft process, guys who love football, guys that are dialed in. That's great. So obviously going a little bit of a break here now. What would you do if you were a player during this period? I know as a coach, you got a lot of stuff on your plate. As a player, how would you treat this period? Well, the big thing we just talked to the guys as we broke down and let them go is, guys, let's focus in on what we did. Remember what we did. Recall yeah. what we did and worked on it. Let's don't forsake everything that we've learned in these last few weeks to come back and we're fattening out of shape. We can't have that. What we got to do is stay in shape and just be ready to roll.
It's going to be here before you know it. Commander's Training Camp open again. It's 12 days, free entry to everyone. It's going to be a great few weeks out in Ashburn. You guys have plenty of training camp experience. Mm -hmm. Any stories that stand out, one or two, that you really remember? That are appropriate, Fred. Yes, you're right. You're, you're right. you're right. As the last group of Washington players to go to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, I went to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, but I got drafted in the second round, so I held out for like four days <laughs> to, so I could get first round money. They ended up paying me my first day at training camp, which was grueling. We really did two a day. Yeah. I remember walking back to my room, and I was walking past stuff in the grass. I was like, yeah, I got got a shirt look just like it. I kept on walking. I'm like, ooh, I got them J's too. I looked up, I see the TV. I'm like, damn, I got a TV like that. Bruce Milton had went in my room and threw all of my stuff out of the window and it was all over. So I had, to, I had to collect it. Plus my bed, they threw my mattress oh, out of man. it. It was oh like, God. it was hard on me, it was hard. My story ain't like that. One of the things I remember, <laughs> I got here in Washington, coming from New York, man, everything was, you know, real tight, secured in New York. I got here. And it was like, you know, everybody broke. Like it was the last day of school when they did our curfew. I'm yeah. like, hold on, we in training camp, cats running out of everywhere. <laughs> so, and I'm like, we won that year, but yeah. yeah, I mean, we ain't win. So I'm like, that's why. <laughs> Right now, yeah, oh, yeah. Funny, so yeah, I, I remember this. I was coming back, you know, on me down in Richmond. We're getting bus to and from the hotel. I'm dying. It's hot. I'm sweating. My arms are sore. My legs are sore. I'm sitting on the bus, and I'm just like, man, I don't know if I can do another day. And Trent Williams looks at me. He's like, man. Like, what you tripping about? And I was like, man, that was a tough day. He's like, you know, when football gets hard, that's when I'm going to retire. And I was just like, all right. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Cool. laughs> it's just so easy. That's the wrong thing to put in your head. Like, all right. <laughs> that was the wrong thing to say. Some guys getting ready to experience that for the first time. Oh. That's going to do it for us here at Command Center. Thanks for being with us. Santa said motherfucker in her. I did. I did. Hi, I'm Jeff Dick, Chairman and CEO of Main Street Bank. Every dollar we touch is not our own. Every dollar represents the countless hours spent on the construction site, late nights in the office, time away from family and friends. Remembering this keeps us in touch with what we do and who we do it for. At Main Street Bank, we are honored to be stewards of our clients' dreams, aspirations, and their money. Bank where trust matters and where you matter. What are y'all guys still doing here? This is not a Marvel movie. We got no extra clips. But if you like what you're seeing, like and subscribe to the Commander's YouTube channel. We'll be right there waiting on you.